my career has been such a privilege to me and has enabled me to understand such a lot about humanity and about how nurses can make a difference to people's lives. And I'm in the fortunate position of being one of the people who now can help other nurses to do that. And so I, I stay because I believe in what we do and because I believe that we absolutely make a difference and because I think that it's really, really important that those of us who've been privileged enough to have a great career in nursing should support those whose careers are just beginning. And in, in my view, that's what leadership is about. It, it's not about going when it's tough, it's about staying when it's tough. My sustenance comes from the fact that I know there are many, many committed nurses and midwives out there who are giving absolutely wonderful care and who are being innovative and creative and actually doing great stuff. So my view is that I'm, I'm like a, a border rider, I call myself, because I, I ride the borders between clinical practice and the politics of health and academia. I think that doing nursing practice if you're a frontline clinician, it's really hard. And one of the benefits of my career is that I've been able to move in and out of frontline practice. And I think if people are, are really tired and disillusioned, then they need a breather. What we have to be able to do is give them permission to come back and not see taking a breather as being an outrageous failing. And in the past, there was this sense, you know, that you had to, I mean, a bit like a sort of war analogy, you know, you had to be on the front line all the time and if you couldn't stick it, then you weren't a good soldier. Well, my view is that everyone needs R&R. &R. And when you're dealing with the realities of clinical care, which is about suffering and life and death, and people triumphing over uh, adversity, but also being immersed in adversity, then to, to bring yourself to that and to give of yourself on a a committed and regular basis is a huge ask. And so if people are thinking of leaving because they're exhausted, then I tell them that it's probably a good idea and I'm looking forward to seeing them back when they've had a rest. If they're thinking of leaving because of the politics or because they say they're not interested in politics, my view is that not being interested in politics is a profoundly political act because there are people who will be in the minister's office every single day telling him how health should be run. And if it ain't us, then someone will be telling him what ought to happen to nursing. And, and I think that there is a, a danger with imagining that politics and health are unrelated. And the danger is that politics goes on, it impacts on health, and you miss the big game. What we have to learn to do is engage with the politics and actually start to manage the politics rather than imagine that we are victims. And this is something that has been the problem in the past. My favorite quote is a Steve Biko quote, which says, the greatest weapon in the hands of an oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. And, and I think one of the problems for health politics has been that nurses have believed that it goes on in spite of them. When you sit down on a bed with someone who is just an extraordinary person that you're washing or you're talking to, and they tell you their story. You learn that ordinary people are capable of greatness. And, and that gives you inspiration and it gives you the most wonderful reward that will not be diminished by the politics of health. My favorite website is one that actually tells the stories or has nurses telling their own stories. We have over 80 groups of nurses telling their stories about the clinical work that they do day in, day out. You will be able to see and read firsthand the work of clinical nurses in New South Wales. And as I say, the exciting thing for me is that they get their names in lights for the work that they do.